Good morning, everybody. Do I have anybody here? Hi. Good morning. I thought I was alone. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everybody, and those of you joining us in this broadcast, wherever you are in the world. Today is August 31st, 2020, in our neck of the woods in Modesto, California. Monday, the last day of August. By tomorrow, in our beloved Philippines, we'll be hearing Christmas carols already. <laughs> it's Christmas there. <laughs> Anyway, I don't know how they're going to be celebrating it, but yep, here we are, August 31st, month number, how many months now in the quarantine? Oh. Huh? March, April, May, June, July, August. We just finished six months of quarantine in, in California. Anyway, okay. Hopefully, this September will bring us uh, a little bit more of, uh, hopefully, a different situation. We don't know. But uh, we, 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 we need to pray, okay? We really need to be a little bit more prayerful and, and really petition our Lord about and Our Lady to put an end to all of these difficulties, these challenges that we are encountering in the world today pandemic uh, and all this you know all of these other difficulties that this brings this lockdown the economic collapse is just giving a lot of difficulty to a lot of people okay anyway let's go and uh, comment on today's gospel the gospel for today's mass comes from St. Luke chapter 4 verses 16 to 30. It's a long gospel. Uh, let me just narrate to you part of it. This is the time when our Lord was um, starting his public life. Okay, He just got baptized in the Jordan uh, by St. John the Baptist. So now he's beginning to um, you know, uh, go around and start preaching. And one of his first stops... One of his first stops was his own village of Nazareth. That's where he went first, okay? among his first stops. And he goes into the synagogue. And customarily in a synagogue, uh, there's a reading of the, uh, the scrolls, the scriptures. And he was given the scriptures for the day to read. And when he opened it up, it opened up to this prophecy. He unrolled a scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Then rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And all, everybody was listening. Because what was coming next was the commentary on, on, the, uh, on the scripture, right? Like what we do here. We read the gospel, then we comment about it. And what was his commentary? Jesus' commentary was as follows. Today... This scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, look, this is not the first time that this, these people heard this, this reading. right? So they're very familiar with what this means. They knew that this passage referred to the prophecy of the Messiah, who has been promised by all the prophets. They knew that this particular scriptural passage is about the Messiah. And here comes Jesus saying that this prophecy is actually about me. I 
am the one that this scripture is talking about. I am the Messiah you have longed for and your ancestors have longed for for all of these many, many years. I am finally here. How did the people react? At first, perhaps it was a shock to them. It said, oh, really? Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 I mean, uh, you, you, you are the son of Mary, right? Eh? You're the son of Mary. Isn't this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, surely, uh, you know, isn't the son of Joseph? We, 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 we know you. How, how can you all of a sudden claim now that you are the Messiah? Eh? What did our Lord tell them, tell these people? Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Very prophetic. Very prophetic words of our Lord. Right? Because it's true. Because human nature is like that. People who are so familiar with us, because we know them well enough to... To, to establish a familiarity with them we practically know we practically know their good side and their bad sides and we know when they are not quite being themselves <laughs> we know when they're not being sincere with us we know when uh, when uh, uh, how they feel uh, given certain situations in their lives we know we know them through and through in other words these people that we know through and through are the first people we normally ignore. That's human nature. Okay? The people that we know very well are the people we ignore a lot. Just think about that. And so how is that? How does that apply to us? The first people we normally ignore are our own parents our own siblings and the people who are close to us and this is the this is the the um, the the vice or the fault called familiarity that because we are too familiar with certain people we tend to disrespect them we tend to treat them in a manner that that does not uh, it's not becoming of their status or of their situation in life. We tend to ignore them. We, we don't take them seriously. We don't take their advice seriously. We don't take their admonishment seriously. Okay? Because we are familiar with them. That's human nature. And our Lord applied His understanding of human nature to His own audience here. and says, <laughs> you know guys, I know this. I know this very well, you know. Uh, no prophet is without honor, except in his own country. So a prophet is, more, is taken more seriously when, when he's from out of town, when he's new, right? All of a sudden, when, when people don't know much about somebody, whatever this somebody says becomes, oh, all of a sudden it strikes them as something new, something incredible, something... Uh, uh, true, right? But when the same truth is being told by somebody very familiar to you, you tend to be tend to ignore it, right? Not because what that person is saying is not true, but it's just because of your attitude towards that person that you have become too familiar with, that you tended to ignore him or her. Okay, but there's, there's an additional complication here. Besides the familiarity. Besides, oh, we know you. right? Besides that, there's an added layer of complication. What is that? These people could not accept Jesus Christ. 
not only because they know him, but also because they were too proud. See? They were too proud to all of a sudden now take some words of wisdom or counsel from this guy. <laughs> right? So it's a combination of familiarity and pride. Why am I going to take advice from you? Who are you again? You know? Why am I supposed to listen to you? Why? You're just a carpenter's son. Maybe if you were the son of a Pharisee, maybe I'll listen to you. Right? But you're a carpenter's son. So that doesn't seem to be credibility built in, you see, in the social, uh, the social status of our Lord. Now the same thing can be true for us when we are not objective about the way we look at reality and truth, we can take people for granted. Not because they're not telling us the truth, but because we are biased. We have our own biases and we have our own pride to deal with. And our biases and our pride do not allow us to see through to the truth of what people may be telling us. Of what people may be counseling us about. Of what people may, may, may be suggesting to us to improve our lives. See? That can happen not only to Jesus but to anybody else who is actually tasked to guide us in life. Okay? It can happen. We can ignore people. We can ignore people and disregard people who are there to advise us to do what is good for our own souls. We can have the tendency to ignore, disregard, reject the instruments of God for our own sanctification. The people that God has put beside us, beside us in this journey to accompany us in this journey of life, we may reject them. See? We can ignore them. We can disregard what they tell us. Not because they're not telling us the truth, but because we are so full of other things. We, we are so full of our own pride. We are so full of our own selves that we only want to believe what we want to believe. We only want to focus on what we think is right. And we turn a blind eye and a deaf ear to other people who can actually help us. Okay? And that's exactly what happened to these Pharisees, to the scribes, to the elders of the Jews. They rejected our Lord, not because our Lord was not telling them the truth, but because... It was more of their pride. It was more of the familiarity. It was more of all the biases that they already had. Now we have to examine ourselves. God, God is always speaking truth to us through the circumstances of our everyday lives and through the intervention of people that God has put beside us. People that God has put in our lives to help us and guide us through this journey of life until we reach eternity. Who are these? What? Who are these? Your parents, Jojo. Your parents, number one. Right? Who else? Who else can be these kinds of people around us? Your grandparents, of course. Well, okay. Parents, grandparents, right? Let's extend that, the, 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 the levels of authority a little bit. Well, you have, you have your pastors, right? You have your pastors in the church. You have your bishops. You have the priests. You have the Pope. When they speak about certain truths that are doctrinal, that are moral, okay, you actually have the obligation to listen. You have the obligation to listen. When your parents tell you things about you, you have an obligation to listen. See? You have an obligation to lend an ear, to understand what they're telling you, and to obey. To obey. 
but you have to rid yourselves of that pride. You have to rid yourselves of that thinking, of that attitude that, ah, I, I got this, you know, I know, I know what to do. <laughs> this is all pride. This is all pride, pride, pride. And, uh, you know, you, you children have to listen to your parents first and foremost. That's the first layer of authority God put in your lives to help guide you through life. Okay? But beyond that, you know, and now I'm speaking to you, uh, adults who are listening to this broadcast, you know, there are plenty of Catholics, plenty of people who, who, uh, who reject, who reject the authority of pastors and priests and bishops and the Pope when they speak truth to us. Okay? When they, when they tell us that abortion is wrong, when they tell us that euthanasia, contraception are wrong, a lot of Catholics turn a blind eye. A lot of Catholics turn away and say, oh, well, you know, that's maybe debatable. Oh, no, <laughs> it's not debatable. And you, by the way, cannot use the excuse that, oh, you know what? The, the priests themselves are, are, are rotten, you know? Oh, the hierarchy themselves, the clergy themselves, they commit all sorts of sins. Look at all of these pedophile priests who have been caught or priests who have been caught uh, doing all sorts of crazy things. And uh, you know, okay, 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 okay. But that, that's beside the point. <laughs> that's beside the point. That's their personal problem. But when it comes to matters of faith and morals, you ought to listen. Because faith and morals are not invented by these clergy. They come from God. Okay? When it comes to faith and morals and doctrinal things, these things come from God. They're not invented by these rotten clergy, no matter how bad and sinful they are. So... And then, so, they, well, how will you know which is doctrinal, which is moral? We say, well, study your catechism. Study your faith. That's the only way you will know. Okay? But when the Pope speaks ex cathedra, meaning with the authority vested in him as the, the teacher, the magister, okay? then you ought to listen. But when the Pope starts talking about climate change, or starts talking about uh, the economy and things like that, well, yeah, maybe you can take it with a grain of salt because, you know, uh, <laughs> these are not really doctrinal matters, right? Um, except that, well, you know, a lot of people also don't understand that uh, the church uh, has a social teaching. So when there are things that are morally, morally wrong with, um, with the way... Uh, society functions okay uh, economically and politically well yes of course the church can comment on these things and the church can speak truth to all of these things when the church condemns corruption in government and many other things like that okay uh, when the church speaks about illicit illegal laws like abortion euthanasia these are all moral things even if they are political uh, also in nature at the same time, see, there are always moral implications behind these things, contraception, etc. So we ought to listen. We ought to listen. We have to set aside our pride. We have to set aside our sinful tendencies and we need to listen. Okay? So let us not reject authority and start pointing to, you know, the, 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 uh, the familiar um, aspects of our relationship with them as a reason to ignore them. Or let's not point to their own sins as a reason to ignore them. Okay? Remember, remember that God can always use the most inept instruments, okay? the most inept instruments to convey His will for us. Nobody's perfect. No pastor, priest, pope is perfect. No parent is perfect. We all have our mistakes because we're all human. Okay? But we need to overcome that, that tendency to focus on their human failures. 
just like these Pharisees, just like these elders, they were only looking at the human aspect of Jesus. Wait, wait a minute, were you not the carpenter's son? See, they were looking at Jesus as a human being. Uh, they were looking at him with the eyes of, 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 uh, uh, of, of, of humans, not with the eyes of God, not through the lens of supernatural vision. And that is why they rejected him. See? And we have to do the same with human authority around us. Let us transcend our familiarity. Let us transcend their, their human weaknesses. Let us not allow their, their human failures to get the better of us when we try to listen to the good things and the truth that they convey to us. Because God is using these human instruments to shape our souls, to convey the truth to us, and to help us get to heaven. Okay, so let us learn to listen. Let us learn to obey. That's it for us, folks. Bye-bye for now. We'll see you again in the more tomorrow, hopefully. You're welcome all to uh, listen to this broadcast, the after-breakfast commentary in the Kleachko household. Now we're off to Mass. Bye. Have a good week ahead of you, everybody. Enjoy your day today. Bye-bye. Hi, Dr. JC. Hi from Japan. We got a guest from Japan listening. Okay, bye-bye.